Hello world and welcome to another episode of GadgetCast. I am Gregory McFadden, joined by Travis MCP with, you know, probably the greatest podcast of all time, I think. I'm telling you, dude, we are killing it. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. We're doing big things. It Bigger is Bigger numbers than ever. It is going well. We got lots of listens on almost, you know, all podcast platforms. We got the YouTube channel up now, yes. getting some views and subscribers there. So that's sure. that's very awesome. Trying to incorporate a video element into it. We're gonna obviously keep doing better right now. We got a pretty basic setup for people who want to listen there, but we're hoping to expand upon that, maybe even do some live streaming in the future if that is popular, if Travis is uh willing to do that. Yes. I'm okay. all about that life, as some may or may not know. <laughs> uh, how 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 has your week been? It's been, it's been interesting. Week. It's been really interesting. Um, of course, I had my my live stream on my uh, channel yesterday, which always is uh, is a lot of fun. I, I love talking to um, I love talking to the people that watch my show. I don't like calling people fans. It just seems weird. It seems kind of douchey. Do you agree? That's it's a terrible. What do you call you call them the the What do you call your people? Because mine are the players, right? So I got my name. What are yours? Oh, uh, I've I've always joked around with what I should call my fans. I was gonna call them the gadgeteers, but I think that's a little. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that's a little insulting, you know. But hashtag gadgeteers. And by the way, super shout out to everyone this past week that tweeted at us with the uh, toilet cast, the hashtag toilet cast from a couple of episodes ago. Thank you. By the way, and Greg had to remind me. I was like, why are people tweeting me getting toilet cast? I couldn't yeah. remember where that came from. Yeah, we, 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 you know, we, we aren't stealing FPT's thunder with the to whole toilet thing, you know, it was just right. off, offhand comment about, uh, you know, how the, you know, toilet cast show, but yeah, people have been tweeting us. Uh, so that's great. I, I told people I wasn't getting enough Twitter love. I, they seem to have rectified <laughs> that. So I'm very grateful. Uh, a <laughs> lot of, a lot of people are leaving us ratings on iTunes. As I told Travis, I, I was, I confided in him that we still have a five-star rating. Maybe. I am deathly afraid of losing it. I got to be honest with more people. <laughs> don't ruin Greg's thing. Yeah, can so can they take it back? Rate. Just leave a if nice, they, you know, five star rating. If they've already reviewed it five, can they undo that? They can't undo it, can they? I think you can. I think you can undo oh, it. Don't do that. You can't undo it. People are people are writing reviews too. They're not even just rating them. They're actually going down there, writing little comments. Lots of great chemistry. Still, I'm still getting great chemistry in the reviews. So that's that's awesome to see. But yeah, what a what a week. What a week for me. Oh, Travis. We do need an update. And tell me if this week changed. Were you ever paid back this week from your friend? We have to do an update. Oh, uh, yeah. No. no. Wait. Oh, no. Wait. Wait, wait. Yeah. He paid me back. I think. Ah, you th oh, this is terrible. You don't even know. I'm not even what sure. What is happening? I'm going to say he did pay me back. <laughs> oh. Y'all need to leave us some more voicemails at anchor.fm slash gadget. I think it's gadgetcast. Um, uh, if you just look at the uh, show notes, there should be a link there. Plus, there's a link for our YouTube channel so you can see us if you really want to look at our face for some unknown reason. Or if you just happen to be somewhere where there's YouTube and not access to the audio podcast, you can check us out there. We'd appreciate that greatly. We will be going live from there on occasion. So definitely check that out. It'd be cool. But we're never leaving the audio part. This part's great. I love it. I love the audio part. If I was a listener, I'd I'd be listening to audio. I'm 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 I got all the podcasts loaded up. I'd, I'd do both yeah. actually. I take that back. I'd be in I'd be in the live stream, be like, that was so good. I'm gonna listen and then re -listen. To it again <laughs> with the superior audio quality because if you're listening to the audio show, that's where you're gonna get the yes. best audio quality. And that is true for those of you listening on YouTube. Uh, even though it sounds pretty decent there, it sounds tremendous. Matter of fact, someone tweet. I think someone tweeted at me the other day was talking about how good our audio quality is, which I'm I'm impressed by. I like that. I like that compliment. I think especially since how early our show is in the production stages, I think we upgraded to our audio quality very quickly compared to yep. a lot of other shows. So, yep. again, I think that's great. Um, let's get into the show a little bit yeah. because we don't want to bore people too much. Let's uh, do it. So I'm going to start this off. We got we got some tech topics, but I kind of wanted to start off on a, on a personal note. Uh-oh. So, as I tweeted out earlier this week, I have left my current full-time job. Mm. I am now full time, Travis. Wow, it's a uh, it's scary. That was a mistake. Why'd you do that? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Full time creator. How does it feel? 
uh, it feels like great. Like I woke up like the first day into it and I was like, huh, what do I do? What do I want to do today? <laughs> what do I want to do? Yeah. I want to make a video. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you're like done. And you're like, I'm done. Now what do I do? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna play a video game. I mean that that's the thing that um personally I, I guess is um I I've been working like the whole time I've been doing this, like free time to me is like such a foreign concept, especially these last two years where I've really been busting it, trying to get out videos very, very consistently. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a point where I'm sure everyone's different, but for me personally, I had to sacrifice a lot, a lot of free time. Yeah. And that's one of the things I said when I get to this point of when I can do this creator stuff full time, for lack of a better term. I don't know what I would consider myself at this point, but um, I'm like, oh, I'll have free time again, and that's basically what happened to me. I was like, you know, when you're when you don't have to go to a job from you know nine to five, mm-hmm. you you and and if you're so used to creating YouTube videos from like six to two in the morning, and then you you could do that yep. in the morning, and then you're like, oh, there's free time in my schedule. <laughs> what like a normal person must feel like when they go to work and they come home and they can you know, watch TV and stuff like that, which is stuff that I just had to put off. Like there's so many shows I have to catch up on. Um, I, I'm like an avid like video game player. And like these past two years, I play like maybe like two games to completion <laughs> just because oh like, I come home and it's like, ah, I really don't have time for this if I want to make a video. So mm-hmm. that's the thing that I'm like doing now. I'm actually like um, Death Stranding just came out for PlayStation 4. Yes. And I'm a huge Hideo Kojima fan. So yep. I've been playing that. That game is super weird. I don't know it what's is. going on. I'm watching. Um, I'm watching someone play through it right now. I'm watching. Uh, I always want to say Markiplier. It's not Markiplier. It is Jack Septicai. Watching Jack Septicai play through it. Okay. It's very strange. I don't know. It, but like any Hideo Kojima game, you don't really know what's going on. But it's always fun and beautiful. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of symbolism, and I was like, oh, yeah. I'm like, what does this all mean? And it's like, yeah. it's a creepy game too. You got like people floating in the air, and they're like, mm-hmm. I'm a local cord strapped to the earth i'm sure it has some like giant message i don't know i'm way too early in the game to really know what's going on but it's fun and i'm, I'm enjoying it yeah uh, he's doing two hour long videos ooh. each one is you know for his uh youtube videos of the game uh i watched his beyond detroit uh playthrough all the way through uh, it was like 10 or 11 episodes each one was like a little bit over an hour and it was it was captivating uh not only just the game itself which I think was amazing, but like his, his playthrough was really interesting. Um, and it's interesting also because as a creator, uh, <clears throat> I thought, so I subscribed to him after that series was over. Interestingly, I found, and this may be the case for us too, uh, that as a creator, I only like him playing certain games, other games he plays. I'm not like as enamored with him as a, as a creator, which is weird because like, well, he's just playing games, you know? but I like his style when he does these type of games versus like any other type of game that he does. So I wonder if like for us, there are people that like to watch us for certain things. So for example, I've gone back to doing reviews here for a little bit for the last like four or five videos. And for the next one or two videos, they've been all just regular reviews of different products versus like the commentary stuff that I'm going to start doing again. And maybe for you, it's, you know, maybe it's when you review a specific thing versus, you know, something else that you do. I wonder if people tune out for like just specific types of content that we do just because they don't like how we do them. I never thought about that before. I, I would, I would think that's pretty normal. I mean, there, I, I think I'm the same way. There's certain people I'll watch for certain reviews, uh, different kind of content. And then there's, other content where it, it just doesn't interest me and it's not like i don't like the creator but like if i see something in my inbox and it, and it doesn't catch me for whatever reason i'm not going to click on it even though i might watch other things that they do i would i would definitely say the same is true for us there's probably people that only come when they see you know whatever review and mm-hmm. there's probably other people who are there for the commentary and then the, the best people are they're, they're there every video and you see them all the time in the comments so yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's definitely a mix. I, I know there's certain types of videos where I can expect a different type of audience. Like I, I, I just put out a tips and tricks video and I always get a lot of like, you know, like beginner users. Obviously, that's that's definitely a segment that you're going to attract. If you have like people who think they're experts, they're not really going to click on a tips and tricks video, even though a lot of the times if people come in, sometimes they'll learn at least like one new thing and like, wow, this is like a game changer for me. Um, Like uh, one of one of the recent examples I did was... um. 
in my tips and tricks video, if you're on iOS 13 on any of these new iPhone 11s, there's no 3D touch. Now, one of the best things right. about 3D touch was you can 3D touch the keyboard. It would bring up this little, you can move the cursor around if you want to go back and edit text. Now, what you do is you long press on the keyboard. It does the same thing. And here's the real mind blower. You long press on the keyboard. You bring up the cursor selector. If you tap on the keyboard again at any part of the keyboard, it'll start selecting and highlighting the text. Jeez, I got to try that. Because I always that was one of the things that in my... So, by the way, I shot a video a week and a half ago about my first week with the 10s or 11 uh, Pro Max. It's been like two weeks now. So, that video comes out later this week after I've had it for three weeks. But anyway... Um, <clears throat> yeah, that was one of my complaints was trying to every once in a while select something at the beginning of a word that maybe I mistyped or something that I have to, I couldn't like, like with, with a, a, like a galaxy note, you just kind of click it and then drag and there's this line and it takes you over right in front of the letter and you can, it's, it seemed easy to me. I could never quite figure it out here on the iPhone and what you're saying now makes, makes sense. I'll have to try to play around with that next time. Oh, uh, once you do, you'll like never do it the other way. You'll never like point your finger up and try and drag it. It's it's such a time saver, and and it just works so well. So yeah, that's, I'm that's also a little bit worried about something too. When it, I'm speaking of iPhone, all right, I'm worried that I'm I'm becoming like a real iPhone fanatic, and more more than that, like so I got these cases that I'm rocking now. I got the the Apple leather case, which is freaking amazing. I got a case from Carved.com. That case is amazing, and uh, I'm digging everything about iOS. <clears throat> I'm going to get this Apple watch at some point. Uh, I've been flirting with the idea of maybe getting the AirPod pros. Um, Look at this. No, you're, you're getting sucked in completely. You named like I'm every concerned. single product they sold before you know it. You're going to have like a home pod on your desk. And no, well, that's not happening. Really? No, I'm concerned. Though. I am concerned. Hey. And I'm like, who, how am I going to get back to Android? I'm trying to think of the, the gap to get like, what is going to bring me back? Yeah, and, and you're you're an iPad guy famously, so you must love that integration right there. Like you're just like on your iPad, you get a message, you're like, oh, da 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 da, airdrop something yeah. over. It, it's a pretty yeah. great experience. My gosh, dude, it's it's kind of scary. It is a slippery slope. Apple needs to mess up. Well, speaking of Apple messing up, what about these software updates on the iPhone, man? Uh, this this last update right before thirteen point two point two was pretty terrible on my phone. I don't know about yours. It was pretty yeah, bad. We talked about it last podcast. We we're both having yeah. like horrible issues. And and last podcast, we were like, I think this will be fixed in a week. Like we, we they're yeah. pumping out these software updates so quickly that we we're just like, we're I'm not gonna complain now. I'm not gonna make like I was tempted to like almost like should I make a video? And I'm like, this uh -huh. is gonna be fixed in a week, I feel like <laughs> out so quickly. By the time I complain, it's gonna be fixed. And like, oh people are here's here's the thing people need to fix, Travis. Wow. I have older videos where I reference the iPhone 11 and, you know, we didn't know the name at the time. I called it the 11 R and people were like, mm -hmm. it's 11. This guy's dumb. <laughs> so, that, the same thing would happen. It would have been like, it's fixed already. How do you not know this? But the video was published a week ago. Yeah. Look at the date, man. Yeah. No, their, their software quality for iOS 13 has been a mess. And it's weird because you think every update you get is going to make everything better, but that's not the case. We went from, a couple updates where it's like, now it's worse. And this yeah. last update was probably the worst of them all because there was minor bugs and stuff like that. But when you have apps closing in the background, when you're scrolling and stuff starts stuttering, you're like, this is how much did I pay for this phone? And right. the software isn't matching there. After this update, everything seems smooth to me again. So I'm I'm happy right now. But but I I really hope like Apple is taking note here and uh I hope iOS 14, like, you know, everyone loves new features. Um, one, one of the things I heard previously about doing like a dark mode is it kind of doubles the chance for bugs. Like um, some, some, some developer on Twitter was saying before iOS 13 even came out, like he didn't think that Apple should be focusing on a dark mode because every time you fix a bug, you, ha you have to kind of like fix it twice in a way. Mm. Because there's two modes of how it displays it to you. Yeah. I don't know how true that is. I know Android has dark mode. I've noticed similar problems with that, but yeah. And it's we talked about it last week, but I am I am weirded out by how many like weird bugs we've seen over the last couple of updates. And it's a trend. If it happened once, okay. But even 13 shipped kind of funky, right? It did, yeah. So then the next update kind of fixed some things and it was okay. It was at 13.1 or something like that. And then 
there was, but there were some, there were some bugs and then another one comes out. It just, it's so weird that I still feel like either someone got fired or someone left Apple or something happened. I, I just, because this was not normal, right? I just think it's a lot of things that need it to come out and they weren't ready, but someone had to make the decision of, do we delay AirPods pro with all that software integration for switching the noise cancellation or do we ship it as is, even though for a week people are going to be complaining about their apps closing in the background. I'm yeah. sure there are a couple software versions ahead and I'm sure they know the pain points. I don't, I, I can't think that they're like that dense that they would they wouldn't know what the pain points are, but someone's making the decision. We have product launches coming up, and they are dependent on this very specific software. The AirPods Pro wouldn't work on the previous version. It wouldn't work on thirteen point one. It was the the software is baked into thirteen point two. So I think it's hey, we got to ship this. We'll fix it in a week. It it. it but it's that's not a great thing for your customers anyway. You know, you probably yeah. want to delay AirPods, but we're in the holiday season. People want to buy these as Christmas gifts. If you're waiting any longer, you risk you risk so much in sales. And <laughs> Apple's a company; they want to make money. I'm sure they. I'm sure no one wants to give you bad software updates. Um, you know, having a bad customer experience is something that will make someone never buy your product again, even if it's once. Someone bought an iPhone during that release, and that was their first time with an iPhone, and they and they had it for a week before the update even came out to fix it. They're gonna think iPhones are poor quality. So I don't think it's something Apple wants out there. Uh, again, thirteen had a lot of new features. Uh, twelve was twelve was rock solid, which again a lot of people might be thinking twelve was so good. Now we have new features, so it's kind of more buggy. I hope fourteen is a step back again. Just go okay. We need to. Make sure this is rock solid because that's the most important part for me. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. I think the risk reward between releasing early or releasing well, measure twice, cut once is what I like to think of. Um, I, I don't like it. I don't like what Apple's doing with this. So, you know, hopefully this is the end of that. They have no more products coming out the rest of the year. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Or do they? I think they um, do. I think they do. I'm, <laughs> I mean, maybe they have at least one. If that 16 inch MacBook Pro isn't out by the end of the year, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch. Have problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so we may see that. I guess there's been some some leaks of that. But um, as far as iOS goes, uh, we we're, we're pretty certain oh, nothing else that yeah that relies on iOS is coming out this year. So hopefully we'll see um, some stability here going into the end of the year. And I think you can look at. Uh, what Android did with Android 10 this year, I don't think there were that many groundbreaking new features, but there was a lot of refinements to the quality of the software. I know not every uh, Android phone has Android 10, but from what I've used on the Pixel, uh, it was a pretty smooth experience software-wise. So yeah. uh, you got to give it to them there that, um, you know, e you know, on Android, even though, you know, not super groundbreaking features, you got some like really rock solid software this year in comparison to iOS 13. Yes. In comparison. Yes. Yeah. Totally agree with that. Totally agree. So what else we got going on this week? Well, I mean, we're talking, we're talking sales. I mean, let's talk a little bit, maybe a little early Black Friday. It is November. A yeah. lot of deals coming out. Travis, mm -hmm. see what you're doing on your channel. I see it. Yes. I see yep, it. Yep. You got all the Amazon stuff. Yes. Big, big ticket items for Black Friday. They, they put out their preview, right? Yeah, I think most most uh, if you go to BlackFriday.com, there's a bunch of the Black Friday uh, previews out there. Best Buy, Walmart has shown their their hands. Um, I believe Amazon. There's, I mean, just about everyone who's going to have any type of significant Black Friday sale uh, will be on that site, if not already, by the time you hear this podcast. So um, this is the time of year where if you were smart enough to wait, or if you were patient enough to wait, you're gonna you're gonna end up looking like a champion. If you're not us, so we know. Yeah, if you're not us, like we can't wait. Like the Pixel, for example, Pixel 4, that thing's getting a massive uh, price break on Black Friday. It was like $400 off. Yeah. Something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like Best Buy or something. It's ridiculous. Like it becomes like an actual great deal. <laughs> it, it, become, it becomes the phone it should have been and maybe a little more. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. At that point, like, holy crap. Yeah. Let me go get one. Um, so, yeah. If you've been waiting for that, you were a smart person. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think you're going to see that with pretty much any product, especially ones, even the ones that have re recently released. Uh, I've been doing a lot of Amazon products because I know they like to mark their stuff down. So that's that's a thing. If you're looking for reviews on any of the 
new Echo stuff or anything like that. Most of that's on my channel right now. Um, having said that, I think we're going to see in sales from almost everyone, except for probably not a lot of spectacular sales from Apple because that just isn't a well, thing. And so pro tip, never shop at Apple on Black Friday. They're not they're not giving you anything. Right. I think sometimes they do gift cards like but it's like you'll you'll find better deals at like a Best Buy. So for example, uh Best Buy is doing some good discounts. Um they're doing like good trade-ins. If you have like a trade-in for like iPhone 11 or or qualified activations, you have to check with which carrier that is. They have like $500 off an iPhone 11 if you go for something like that. Home pods are like 200 bucks, which Yeah, I saw that. You know, hey, it sounds great and if you if you're heavy in the Apple ecosystem, that might be a product you might want to pick up. I mean, two hundred dollars is not that much. So, yeah, um, yeah. And then uh, I think they have some Apple Watch deals. I think like eighty dollars even off the Series Five, depending on the model. Like some of the higher end models, I think they're discounting more. Uh, if you're getting like the aluminum version, fifty dollars off. Which that product just launched. That's a solid deal on them. I've I've already seen a few AirPods Pro things like fifteen dollars off. Um, AirPods Two. Like I think with the uh, wireless charging case, I saw them for 160. So there are definitely deals out there. Just don't go to Apple to find them. Yeah, and as for things like Samsung, uh, you'll find those mostly at carrier stores. Although Samsung themselves.com has been known to kind of go out there and stick their tongue, their, their tongue, they stick their toe. I don't know if they stick their tongue anywhere, but they stick their toe into that uh, kind of uh, sale thing as well. So keep an eye. I would just go to BlackFriday.com, check it out, and see what kind of sales are out there. Don't, and really I would say what might seem really obvious, don't buy anything tech related or really almost anything other than food for the next two weeks, because it just, unless it's on one of those preview sales of which there's a couple of those. Uh, but by and large, you can just do your entire black Friday sale uh, purchasing at home. Cyber, and don't forget uh, cyber Monday as well. Yeah. You can do I, it at home. I think best buy has some of like the better deals I'm seeing. I think if you're like a my Best Buy Rewards member or something like that, I know I am. I'm, I'm yep. seeing like um they have like the A7 III, which is the camera I use, and that's like a two thousand dollar camera. Now they have it discounted two hundred dollars, so it's eighteen hundred. And then if if you're like a my Best Buy Rewards member, you're basically getting another two hundred dollars off. Oh, and it's like oh. a yeah one thousand six hundred eighteen, which again that's a lot, but for that camera, that, it never goes that low. Like if you can score it, um same with the lenses. That lenses almost never go on sale. And they're doing like two hundred dollars, even off like the G Master stuff for Sony. So definitely check that out. There, there's some, wow. there's some killer deals out there. I tweeted about that earlier today. That's incredible. Any, any, any favorites that you like? I know you just did like a review of what the Echo Studio. How is, how is that? That's like a home. That's actually, right? yeah. It's so anyone who doesn't know. So if you're familiar with any of the Amazon Echo stuff, you know the the Alexa stuff. Um, by the way. Uh, you may for any of you who watched one i don't even remember which which <laughs> which video it was i did a little troll for uh gadget cast where in the middle of the video review i did a alexa play um see now mine's gonna rank off oh no uh, uh play nope oh, cancel see that's what happens live on gadget cast um i i did it a uh alexa a play uh gadget cast which the cool thing is the echo will play podcasts, including ours. So anyone who was watching that <laughs> review anywhere near their echo, listen, got to hear our, our podcast. And by the way, it worked because I looked at our metrics in the podcast before that episode and after, and there were no plays on Alexa, but <laughs> people are going to be so mad when they listen to this episode. <laughs> there were, yeah, exactly. If you're listening it's to right now. the one star review, <laughs> <laughs> but legitimately, there were a couple of plays, so I thought that was really funny. Uh, I really enjoyed that. But yeah, no, the Echo Studio is really kind of an amazing piece of a piece of hardware. They've been trying to really get online with uh, get in line with Sonos sound quality, and I feel like they kind of did. They went a, they went one direction, and it sounded it sounds great. Um, in my review, I mentioned that Sonos has a much clearer kind of mid and high kind of end as far as vocals go, but it sounds great. And you can pair them and you can pair it with your Fire TV to have like better sound for your um, for your television watching. It, it's just a it's a fantastic piece of hardware. It's at two hundred dollars right now. It will routinely go down to like one eighty or so, maybe even less than that, um, because Amazon just discounts their hardware so so frequently. And at that price, it's hard to beat. I and I've been getting at questions about the HomePod versus it, and it's hard for me to answer that because the only time I really listened to the HomePod was uh, when I was. Uh, at Jonathan Morrison's uh, studio, and it said that sounded great. But 
I think with the things you get with this, with Bluetooth and there's a 3.5 millimeter in and all these other kind of cool things, I think it's a better deal per personally. But at the $200 deal that they're doing for the HomePod, it, it's pretty it's, close. Yeah, it's it's going to be neck and neck with that, depending on what sort of features you're in. Obviously, for a HomePod, it's more limited in the user base than that. Um, with Echoes and stuff, too, if you're, if you're like an Apple Music subscriber, you can actually do that on the Echoes now. So it actually yeah. plays very well in an Apple ecosystem as well, if you wanted to pick up either or. Um, yeah, I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be interested to hear this studio because I have, I have a couple HomePods at my house. I have the Echo Show, yes. the big one, the 10, 10 inch. Yeah, I, I have that, that one. sounds pretty good. So the studio would sound oh, even it's better. better. Than that. Oh, it's much, much better than that. Yeah. yeah so that, than that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Much better. Yeah, yeah I, better I'd have that. to try that. Yeah. I mean, if nothing else, uh, you can give it a try. If it's not up your alley, you can always return it. Those holiday return policies are pretty good right around now. Uh, speaking of those type of things, because, uh, you know, we're starting to kind of wind down. First of all, let me walk down. For those of you who don't know, I have a miniature dachshund who usually sits by me. He makes me nervous when he walks out of the room because it's been a minute since he's gone to the bathroom and he will wait by the door. And there's a time limit <laughs> between the time he looks at the door and the time that he goes, okay, well, the front of the TV is going to work for me. But at any rate, what I think <laughs> what I'd like to talk about next is some of the television streaming stuff. So um, I've been spending some time obsessing over this stupid show, uh, Good Morning, on uh, Apple TV+. Plus. You, you keep calling it Good Morning. I think it's The Morning Show. <laughs> the Morning Show. Well, Good Morning, good morning, good morning Show. Morning. It's a good show. Um, I like it because I like Aaron Sorkinson's type stuff, and it's very similar to him. But I was kind of frustrated when I got three episodes in and realized there was nothing more to watch and that they're going to do it weekly after that. I get why, and you can please explain why, uh, Greg. But I was a little frustrated. I'm like, come on, man. I want to binge this thing. I would have binged it all if it wasn't for that. Well, the strategy is they have basically seven shows. So they have to do these weekly releases. Otherwise, why would people come back? If you only have like seven shows, maybe you find like two that you like. If you could binge it all in a weekend or two weekends, you know, people aren't going to come back and check the TV app. What Apple really wants right now is people coming back and checking every week on the TV app because they have some premieres coming up. They have the M. Night Shyamalan series being at it pretty soon. And again, if you look at the release schedule, they have stuff coming out through the end of the year and beyond that. But if with with especially with their limited, very, very limited selection at launch, if you were able to watch all those episodes at once, it would be over for them. You'd watch it. You'd go, that was great. You'd forget about it. And you wouldn't be checking the TV app. Now, if they're doing weekly, if you really got hooked on a show, like if you're like Travis and you love the morning show, you're like, all right, I want the next episode. So you're going to check back in the app and then maybe you'll go, oh, what's this new show? That wasn't here before. Let me check that out, too. So yeah. even though it's frustrating and I agree with Travis, I hate waiting now i am so you like i'm a i love netflix because like just give it to me let me watch it on my own time i have very limited time let me watch it and it's the same thing with this it's like come on i want to watch it but i get it i get it if they didn't do it, it it would be over yeah strategically even though they have a year i mean most people have a year because they bought their hardware or whatever they, they have the year but it's it's the fact that like people will forget people's attention yeah. and it's so limited it's, it's i agree like, with that it'll, it'll it'll just be like oh there's nothing else here that was it. Great service. Oh, my year's yeah. up. Oh, let me cancel. Yeah. And that goes into one other thing. Uh, people will still talk about how Siri is terrible and Siri may not be as good as Google or something like that, but Siri is nowhere near as bad as Siri used to be. Right. And that, I want to make problem. a point about that. That's because yeah. the perception at the beginning was so bad that people don't realize that it actually got better. Yeah, no, that's and that's the thing. Like people won't use it and they don't realize the improvements that Apple will add over time. Whereas something like Google was good when they launched it and it has a much more favorable thing. They do like those. Um, There's some uh, research group that does like these like rankings of like Siri answered these questions better. Now, I believe in recent years, Siri has actually beaten the Amazon assistant. I won't wow. say her name, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So but people have the perception that the echo or whatever is better at handling different types of questions because when it first came out it was good at that and it did beat siri yeah. but now with all these updates that they're adding that's another thing another real big problem for iphone is they rely a little too much on internet and cloud where i think they should be doing some more of these common voice things 
locally on the device, which is mm-hmm. something I think Google is even doing now. Because the biggest pain point for me for Siri is if I'm not at home, which it usually works pretty rock solid, but if I'm out in a bad cell area and I say, hey, blah, blah, call this person or you know, message that, and then it goes, I can't. I, you know, it, it just like stutters and you're like waiting like a minute and you get so frustrated you never want to use it again. Right. Yeah, those those first uses of anything are so critical. Um, and let's quickly uh, transition over to Disney Plus, which is coming out here very, very soon. As a matter of fact, by the time most of you are hearing this, it's probably ready. And The Mandalorian looks amazeballs. It looks like a darn movie. Um, there's so much content that's going to be available in here. And so many people have just immediately given the win to Disney. And maybe they, maybe they will take it. We just have to see how they execute my biggest concern is that the first week and i have no idea if this is going to be the case but the first week is going to be so massive they're going to have problems with streaming and people are going to get frustrated there like it's not going to buffer and it's not going to look good or that's what i'm concerned about yeah that's that's definitely yeah i didn't even consider that i'm I'm more like um i saw like their like launch lineup for some of the stuff um i'm surprised they're not just going to put all the like uh marvel stuff right right there There's, there's a lot missing from the catalog so that's surprising to me. Uh, I think even though like Disney has like tons of nostalgia and they're going to have like a huge back catalog, I still think a lot of these services is going to rely on how good original content is. Yes. Because even though if you saw something like in, you know, an older show and you like it, you need something new to kind of draw you. In. I mean, maybe originally the nostalgia probably will draw a lot of people in, but you're going to need stuff to keep people there and a reason to keep paying. But um yeah, I, I haven't seen any trailers for the Mandalorian. I, I, I like oh to my gosh. Go home, like kind of spoiler free and like I came across it. I, when, typically when I know I'm gonna watch something or a game I'm gonna play and I know when I don't look at trailers, but I didn't really know anything yeah. about it. I saw a trailer somewhere and I was like <gasps> my eyes fell out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's that's exciting. Like, wow. That's, that's show that I'm like, all right, this I'm gonna watch it no matter what. And like bad or good, yeah. give it a shot. But yeah, if you're saying the trailer's good, what what date does it launch on? I feel like it's like, is it like the 12th or 14th? I think this is coming up week. I think it's like in a day or two from when we're recording right. this. Let's wow. see. Dis- That's so soon. Disney Plus. Disney Plus launches on the 12th, two days. So as I said, as a, so a lot of you are going to be hearing this, it's going to have launched. So uh, you guys in the future, I hope you're enjoying it because we're in the past right now as we're recording this. We are in the past. Yeah, they're going to listen to GadgetCast on a Monday, get their Disney ready on a Tuesday. It's going to be, balls. It's work out perfect for them. They're going to have all the time to binge our show 100,000 times. Yes. And you can go watch the By the way, it does seem like people like the two episodes in the week. We got uh, equal amount of listens on both, and they, they both really have done well. I'm, I'm floored by the response we've gotten. I think we're on to something hot, man. We need to, we need to keep this going. Uh, please reach out to us on the Twitter tweets. Uh, I'm uh, Travis MCP. He is Gregory McFadden. And uh, on YouTube, all, everything's in the show notes. Yeah. Let, I mean, as long as Greg keeps putting it in there. <laughs> I, I want to know if, if you are, if you made it to the end of the show and, and you're going to tweet at us, what do you guys think of like two episodes a week? Do you like that mm-hmm. or do you prefer just one episode a week? We, we really want to know because I think our podcast is a little different from other podcasts. Some of them go on for like hours and hours. Right. We're like a 40 minute show, roughly, you know, 30, 40 minute show. So we think mm-hmm. that two episodes a week is like a really nice thing. And then if you really like the show, you got two things you can enjoy during the week. So let us know on Twitter if you like that format. I, I, I think it's working pretty well for us so far, though. I do too. And plus, we are darn awesome. So I am not terribly worried about that because I think everyone loves us. You think everyone's just going to give us like a solid, like, hey, you know, do do it five times a week. Just well, here's the thing. Family. The fact that I got so many toilet cast uh, hashtags over the week and, you know, it's it's good enough to get fired for comments. I feel like we're on to something and I appreciate all y'all. Yeah, Travis is coming up with all the catchphrases. I need to. I, need I love to, it. I need to sharpen my wit and come up with something for one show. That don't have to be in the next episode of their latest <laughs> gadget cast. And, and it's sub show, the toilet cast, which we will have to do at least one episode of toilet cast where we broadcast from the toilets. Just once, just one. Put it'll it on here. It. It'll be very, that's how you know it'll be from the toilets. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. That'll do it. Listen, that was great. We're doing another week here at the gadget cast studios here in Seattle and in New Jersey. 
I am Travis. He is Greg. We'll see you next week. All right. End.